Chef David Rose here again coming at you live from the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And today we're making a pork wellington. So I kind of give you a behind the scenes look of how much work and labor and ingredients go into one delicious dish. So this right here, traditionally with wellingtons, you have your duck cell stuffing. So all of this right here is going into there. We have apples, we have mushrooms, we have onions, we have shallots, we have herbs. The brine, brines are great for marinating and getting those delicious flavors in all of your meats. This right here are our brine ingredients. And over here, we're making our amazing, through the roof, off the charts, mushroom sauce. We got mushrooms, we got beef stock, we got heavy cream, because cream and butter equals flavor. And we're making some fondant potatoes, a long forgotten art of making potatoes that are literally going to blow your socks off. First things first. When we're eating meat, any kind of meat, we want that tender, luscious, succulent meat. And a really good way to take an exceptional cut of meat to an extraordinary cut of meat is to use a brine. So I'll be showing you a simple brine for this recipe that can be used over and over and replicated to get your meats nice and tender and delicious. First things first, water. That is the liquid we're gonna be using in our brine. Uh, the great thing about brines also is you can get real creative with it. You can use different types of juices, different types of beer, different types of alcohol. It'll impart really, really good flavor. So get, you know, get creative, get fun. As long as you keep to these, uh, these standards as far as using liquid, salt, sugar, you'll be okay. Second step, we have the water in there. We add kosher salt. We add sugar. The sugar and the salt is gonna act kind of as a curing solution where it's gonna tenderize and also break down and um, marinate the, um, the meat. So we have that little bit of garlic in there because who doesn't like fresh garlic? You wanna always have some type of aromatic. In here we have thyme, we have bay leaves, and green peppercorn. The reason I like green peppercorn a lot, it gives a nice little fruity light note and it plays very well with the pork in this dish. Once you have everything, all your browning ingredients in the pan, you bring it to a boil and you whisk it. Whisk it good. Kind of reminds me of this song. All right. So once that comes to a boil, all those delicious flavors, the aromatics, the salt, the sugar, the green peppercorn, the thyme is going to infuse into that liquid. And that's going to be your brine. Easy enough. You let that cool down to room temperature. When it's nice and cooled, you take your pork tenderloin and you put it into a Ziploc bag. And we have our cooled down brine right here. You see those peppercorns floating around. That garlic got nice and tender. The thyme, it's gonna add really exceptional flavor to this pork. And what you do, you just pour that over the pork and you let the brine do its thing. You let it massage and break down and tenderize the muscle fibers. And I tell you, pork tenderloin by itself is good. With this brine, forget about it. Gonna be amazing. So you let this do our thing. Ideally, you wanna let it marinate overnight, but I'd say at least, if you're in a rush, at least two to three hours. But with this right here, time is of the essence. You could do it shorter, but ideally overnight, you'll get those flavors to get in there and just seep into the meat of that pork tenderloin. And when you bite into it, you'll know. So stay tuned for the next steps in this chef series. It's gonna be exciting. Stay tuned, guys. Hello, Chef David Rose coming at you again from the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And today we're making a mind-blowing, literally mind-blowing pork wellington. And one of the first steps when we're making the pork wellington in any wellington is you will find a traditional duck cell filling. Now, a traditional duck cell filling is wild mushrooms, shallot, onion, you blend that up. But you know what? We're not doing normal. We're not doing traditional. We're throwing that out the window and we're gonna make it customized, highly delicious, and putting our own signature mark on it. First things first, what we have today, if you look to my left, is the induction cooktop. And the great thing about this cooktop right here is it's cool to the touch, it heats up quickly, it cools down quickly, a lot more efficient, 
and it means with the efficiency is less heat, so I'm not sweating as much. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Next, we're gonna add some butter, because fat is flavor. And who doesn't like butter? I know I do. So we have the butter and the olive oil right now. You see that literally less than 30 seconds, it went from cold pan to now melting butter. What else can you do that with? I don't know, but with the seduction stove top, it's easy. All right, so we got that going to there. We add shallots. It adds a nice little sweet onion kind of note to it. A little bit of garlic. Because when you're sauteing vegetables, garlic just really amplifies whatever you're making. All right, so that, bring it down a little bit. And then we're gonna add onion. We're in Atlanta, we're in Georgia, so why not? We're using Vidalia onion, locally sourced. And then from here, you wanna get a nice browning and light translucence on the vegetables. You wanna get fancy? Flick the wrist, all right? And just like that, we got to where we wanna be. All right, so quick recap, we have our butter, we have our olive oil, we have our shallot, we have our garlic, and Georgia Vidalia onions. And what you're looking for is that nice, light translucency, not too brown, but a nice, light, golden brown. Okay. And from there next, we wanna add also some mushrooms. Traditionally, in a traditional duck cell, you're using wild mushrooms. Today, we're using oyster mushrooms. They add a nice meatiness to the dish, and it's gonna go very well with the pork. We wanna add our aromatics, a little bit of thyme, and sage goes wonderful with pork. So we're adding a little bit of sage in there also. And then we're sauteing that down, getting everything nice and happy, happy and cooked down. And you can just smell it right now. The onion, the garlic, the mushrooms, the butter, the sage, the thyme. It's already beginning to smell like Thanksgiving, which is right around the corner. So this particular recipe right here will be great. Bring it out, it's definitely a nice presentation piece in the middle, you have that turkey. Why not put a pork wellington right next to it? I'm just saying, the recipe will hear. So the only way to find the recipe is to stay tuned on the chef series. But I'll give that to you later. Okay, so we got the mushroom sauteing down, sweating. I'm gonna raise the heat a little bit. And you know what else goes good with pork? Apples. So what I have right here is some golden delicious apples. They're great for baking, they're great for cooking, and apples go well also with sausage. Are you paying attention? Make sure you write it down, people. Better yet, print the recipe when it comes out. Okay. So we're gonna let the apples kind of break down a little bit. We'll let it just do its thing. Nothing too hard, right? Simple, easy to follow instruction steps and we're cooking with all electric today, and it's going by like a breeze. Careful at home with this. I'm a pro, so you know. It took a couple years to perfect. All right, so we got that going. We got everything cooking down. And to this, I wanna add another depth of flavor, another layer of flavor. I'm gonna add some Madeira wine. Madeira is a fortified wine. So what a fortified wine is essentially, you have your wine, which is delicious as it is, but you know what? We're gonna add more alcohol to alcohol. So you're adding brandy to that wine, and that's what a fortified wine is. It's gonna add a nice little layer of sweetness. All right, so once you add the Madeira, we don't necessarily want the alcohol, which sometimes you do, but what you're looking for pretty much is to cook off the alcohol and just retain that flavor of the Madeira. And once those flavors start to marry, the onion, the shallot, the garlic, the sage, the apple, it's going to really bump up our exceptional pork tenderloin to an extraordinary, might I even say, superhero caliber pork wellington. All right guys, so that's doing its thing right now. Come back for the next step. You do not want to miss it. And we're getting closer inch by inch to our finished Pork Wellington. So stay tuned for the Chef Series. Hello and welcome to the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. 
I'm Latanza Ajay, and with me is Chef David Rose. Hello. And we are excited to announce the second season of the Georgia Power Chef Series, of course, featuring Chef David Rose. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to jump right in. Cool. You're my sous chef today. You do know that, right? I'm ready. Let's all go. All right, roll the sleeves up. We're going to make it happen all with the cooking advantage of all electric. Today, we are making the pork wellington. And in traditional wellingtons, there is the duck cell but we're doing not classic, we're putting a riff and a spin on classic. Oh, so nice. since it is pork, apples and sage goes well, so all that is in there. So oh, what we have right. to do next right now is we're gonna go ahead and put it in the food processor okay. and blend that. All you right. think you can handle that? I think I can do all that. All right, so I'm gonna have you take that spoon right, right there right. and just go ahead and get all that deliciousness, all the oh, onions, all the shallots, juice. all the garlics, all that pan juice inside of this right, right here. I'm gonna make yes. I'm gonna make my grandma proud. Make grandma proud. Make this pan real good. Grandma, we're gonna make you proud today. <laughs> One way or another, but you're doing a great job. Perfect. Right. So I'm gonna have you push that green button right there. Oh, and, and we'll get to blending. Uh until it gets to like, you know, um pulse kind of consistency oh, okay. where it's minced. Right. Kind of a paste of sorts. Alright, yeah. here we go. So I'll let you know when. Okay. All right. And we don't want to puree it to death, but give it a nice kind of coarse, kind of, you know, like grits, the consistency of grits. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, so we're about there right now. All right. Okay, and the most important part, I'm gonna have you taste it, oh. and let me know if it needs salt or pepper. But I think we should be A-OK, -okay if my uh, predictions are correct. That's good. It's good? It wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to hit it with a little salt. A little pepper. salt, okay. A little salt and pepper never hurt nobody before. Right. Everything in moderation. All right. So I'm gonna take this out here. Put it in the bowl. Mix that up. Give it a quick little stir with that pinch of salt and pepper that yeah. you suggested. Yeah. I'm taking your advice. Well, I'm taking your advice. It's gonna be a winner. It's gonna be a winner. All right. Now try it now. Okay. Yeah. Get a little corner. Much wow. better. See? Mm -hmm. Teamwork okay. makes the dream work. Exactly. That's that step. Make sure you stay tuned for the Chef Series. We're going to come back with more amazingness, more deliciousness, and making her grandma proud. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> so what we have here, again, is the pork wellington. And what we did right here, we had our brine, our pork tenderloin with that delicious brine. Mm -hmm. We have salt, we have sugar, mm -hmm. we have garlic, That's we have right. thyme, we have peppercorn. Yeah. We let it sit for about five to six hours. And we're going to go ahead and take that out, remove okay. that. From the brown, I'll give you some tongs. Good, there you go. You. you look like you've done that before. Well, maybe once or twice. Once or twice. Once or twice. Okay. And you okay you to leave the time on here? Oh, you can take those off. All right. right. Yeah. And what we want to do right now, after it's been brined, all those delicious flavors mm -hmm. of thyme, of garlic, of sugar, of salt, have marinated and massaged its way mm -hmm. inside of the tenderloin. So I'm going to have you pat that down. All right. The brine has done its job and now we're going to season it, but you want to make sure you have a nice dry surface. All right. So that salt and pepper adheres to that. She's so it delicate here. with it. So <laughs> delicate. Well, it's been massaged. Yeah, it's been massaged. Like yeah, the night, so. there you go. Well, Give you, it a little when, TLC. When you wake up from a massage, you don't want to be treated. You Very, know? you're right. You don't want to be disturbed. Be, you don't want right. to be jostled. You want to be tenderly treated. Yes, tenderly awakened. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, so there that's there what go. we're going to do to the All meat. All right. I appreciate that. I'm sure the and pork gonna, appreciates that. Right. <laughs> it's going to taste delicious yes, that way. Yes. So I'm getting all of these peppercorns there you go. out of there. I think we're good. Yeah, you good. yeah this padded dry. Yeah, all there right. you go. Mm -hmm. That's that residual brown you want to get off of there. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I think we're good. All right. Then from there, it's a pretty big piece of meat. So you want to generously season with salt and pepper all right. over the tender. You're going to let me do it. I'm going to let you do that. Oh, Today, wonderful. Matanza is my sous chef, and we're going to make this happen. There you go. All right, now I'm not, I'm not over salting it. No, no, it's a pretty good. big piece of meat. So All actually, right. you want to season More. it pretty aggressively. Oh, wow. Okay. It's where you see the specs Ooh, of the salt and pepper because it's a big cut of meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big it's cut aggressive. of meat. It might look like a lot, but a lot of the salt and pepper is going to come off oh. when you sear it also on the grill. Okay. And you want to make sure you know that salt and pepper has a chance to get inside of the meat. So, That's yeah. right. All right. There you go. Everything tastes better yeah. with a little salt. A little salt, a little pepper, you know. All right, I'm going to go aggressive mm -hmm. this time. There you go. See? Perfect. And See, is this like she table is learning salt? already. This is kosher salt. Oh, I like yeah. kosher it salt because the granules mm -hmm. are a little bigger. You could actually mm -hmm. see the salt go on there, yeah. and it adds a nice little crust 
when we sear it of that salt and pepper. Right. Now, mm -hmm. would you ever use like a flavored salt or something like yeah, that? Yeah, sometimes, you know, like pink Himalayan salt. Uh, you have celery salt, mm -hmm. garlic salt, all those salts. Okay. Those okay. are all delicious, all flavors yeah. that you can do and use. But for today, we're using salt and pepper. But feel free, improvise. Right, okay. Take it yeah, home. Right. I'm sure your husband will. Do a little remix on <laughs> it. Put a remix in it, exactly. All right. So does all right. this look good? That looks Excellent. perfect. All right, perfect. very good. So right now, I'm going to hit our electric griddle with a little bit of oil. All right. That's perfect. And we're going to get a nice sear and crust on there. So I'm going to have you All do right. that Oh, I get as to put well. It on. Yes, Very good. Well. Now, you know the benefit of an electric griddle yes. is that it cooks evenly it the does. meat and it's it hot does. It all does. the way around. There you go. Oh, See, just like that. that? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Music literally <laughs> to my ears. And that is so great because the chef, for me, I'm all about uniformity mm -hmm. and consistency. And every time, 10 out of 10 times, I'm going to get the same product on the electrical griddle. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Now, how long is it going to take to sear? So right now, you want to sear it about, like, you know, around two to three minutes each side. Okay. You want to get that nice brown, caramelized, golden crust on there. Because oh, once yes. you get that crust, it's going to seal all those juices mm -hmm. and flavors. Vacuum seal it inside of the meat. Oh, my God. And it's going to make all the difference when you have mm -hmm. that crust and that tender interior of the tenderloin. Oh, I All wish right? they could smell it. Uh, they can't smell it, but they can grab the recipe. <laughs> and the only way to do that is to follow the Chef Series on the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center, Facebook, social media sites. So we're gonna finish that off, get it nice and golden brown. Stay tuned for the next steps, because I'm putting Latanza to the test, and I think she'll pass. Stay tuned, guys. Hello, Chef David Rose and Latanza Ajay from yes. Georgia Power, joining you again right now with the Georgia Power Chef Series at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. So today we're continuing the pork wellington, and the next step in this process, mm -hmm. we're gonna add even another depth and layer yeah, of flavor. flavor. We have the pork tenderloin right here that Latanza oh so graciously uh, seared off on the griddle. So what we're going to do now is add another layer of saltiness, flavor, and a savory note. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this canvas right here, and we're gonna go ahead and lay out mm -hmm. the prosciutto flat, because what we're gonna do is wrap it. So you kinda lay it out, kinda shingle it, start from that side, mm -hmm. and work your way down there. Yeah, right in the middle, a little lower down. All right. Now yes. what I love about prosciutto mm -hmm. is it's nice and salty. It is, it's right? nice and salty. Not super salty, it has a nice mild flavor to yeah. it. And I don't know about you, we were talking about it before we started filming. I just sit there and just munch and oh kind of snack on it. And Wrap this I'm good around with that. a little bit yeah. of mozzarella cheese. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or some figs. But it, it's so nice and thin. It really, really is. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to do lengthwise and do a couple to make sure that it's long enough also. I'll jump All in right. here. I'll help you out as well. Thank you. You know, because I don't know about so you, but I'm ready to eat this exactly. pork while it's exactly. Now you can go home and recreate this. I know. <laughs> you ready for that? And I've never thought about wrapping it on the mm -hmm. pork, so I can't wait. It's so good. Pork on pork. You can't go yes. wrong with that. All right. So this right here, this is going to do one of two things there. We're going to go ahead and wrap it in there. That's going to make sure it's nice and secured and tight and ensure that the juice and the fat from that delicious pork won't leak out and make the puff pastry rather soggy. Oh, so it's doing one of two it, things. It's creating it. flavor and also securing. Like a little shelter. Yeah, a little shelter in there. A nice little a sheltered little environment. Shelter. Nice little dish <laughs> <laughs> of delicious prosciutto. That's right. Exactly. And that's what we're doing. All about building flavors and doing it in a way when it's done, you can enjoy it. It's not soggy. All right, so what we do then next is we have our duck cell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you put a nice little thin layer right there in the middle. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do this yeah. graciously. There you go. Right in the middle will be perfect. There you go. All right. It might be a yeah, little too. Is that Yeah, that's, that's, fine, that's fine. fine. Yeah, you can do a little thinner in the middle. Okay. Kind of like concentrate in the middle because we're going to wrap oh, it up. Yeah. Okay. There you All go. Right. That's, per that's perfect. There you go. Just like that. See, look at you. Hey, you give me good stuff to yes. work with. Yes, Grandma, look at your granddaughter. Uh, she is yeah. doing her thing today. <laughs> she will yeah. be proud. She will be proud. What and is she? Shocked. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, all right. Yeah, this you is can the last just, you just spread bit. all that out. All right. Yeah, nice thin layer. Get that nice and uniform. Mm-hmm. It's looking oh, good already. Get a all nice right. little thin layer of that duck cell. That with good? the onions, yes, that's perfect. And the apples. Mm, and the apples right. and the garlic and the shallot 
and the Madeira wine. All right, so what you do now Look at that is- that beautiful piece mm, of pork. It's good, you did a good job. Oh. But we're not done yet. Okay. What we wanna do, we wanna encase the pork tenderloin inside that delicious prosciutto. All right. So you wanna kinda use oh, look at this the plastic the wrap. Right tricks here. the tray, baby. It's cleaner, it's more efficient. All right, so we take this, right? And from there, you wanna kind of use oh, the plastic wrap. Yes, as a guide. To roll it as exactly. a guide. Exactly. And then take that, oh, like so. Yes, got it. Roll it up, it's nice and secure, that nice little secure environment of meat. And then just like this, you wanna make it tight and roll it. Oh. So it's like a nice kind of cylinder shape. Right. Just roll it up. And are we going to so cook nice it? Nice and more? tight. Not yet. No, okay. what we're doing right now is we're making sure that it's nice and tight. So that way, we're going to roll it actually in the puff pastry next. Oh, got it. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it tightens this it up. Kind of looks like, you know, like in a, a sausage, sausage casing. Sausage. Exactly. That's right. Yep. And you just tie off the ends. I'll tie this end. Oh, you can tie that end. All right. Nice and tight. Mm hmm. All right. Perfection. She's been gift wrapped. She's been ready. gift wrapped. I take that for a birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> I take it once you, once you finish cooking it. There we go. <laughs> so, what we do now then is we put it in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes, let that set up, and stay tuned for the next step. I guarantee it's going to be delicious. Right, let's answer. Absolutely. All We're right. on the way. And the only way to find it is here at the Chef Series at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. Stay tuned, guys. Hello, welcome back again. Chef David Rose here with your Chef Series at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And we're finishing up the final touches, but not quite yet, of our pork wellington, which you have right here. So far, a quick recap on the steps that brought us to this moment. We made the duck cell with the apples, with the sage, with the mushrooms, with the onions, with these shallots in there. Hit it with that Madeira wine. Add a nice little sweetness. We go ahead and seared off the pork tenderloin. We wrapped all of that deliciousness, all that yumminess inside the prosciutto. Now you know what's next. We're wrapping it in puff pastry. You guessed it right. So after allowing the pork tenderloin about good 15, 20 minutes, let that set back up in the fridge. We're gonna unravel it from the plastic wrap and have the prosciutto and place it inside of our puff pastry. Sounds simple enough, right? Be careful not to roll it off the side of the table. No bueno. <laughs> All right. Oh, that looks good. All right. So we have that delicious prosciutto that's now adhered to the pork tenderloin with the help of that delicious duck cell. You take that, and if you want, save yourself a step and some energy, use the plastic wrap, and just unroll it onto the puff pastry. Easy, right? Put it right in the middle, like so. And to get you started with the rolling process, feel free. You could put, use the plastic wrap to roll it. And then from there, get it all in the inside of the puff pastry. I'm gonna secure the sides like that, press it down, press it under, down, and press it under like so. And what we wanna do now is secure the Wellington inside of the puff pastry. So we're gonna roll it one more time, I promise, the last time. By us rolling it, it's getting rid of all those air pockets, making it a nice uniform shape, and it's gonna make for a great presentation when it comes out of the oven, all right? Take the sides again and just roll it up. And by rolling it like this, gonna ensure that nice, tight, cylindrical shape when we bake it. All right, looks like a little burrito, but it's not, it's a pork wellington, so make sure you come back. We're gonna finish this off and the Alto Sham Vector, and it's gonna be oh so tasty. Stay tuned, guys. Chef David Rose, back at it again. We're in the home stretch for our Pork Wellington at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. What we're gonna do now is a quick recap of what we have in this beautiful baby right here. We have the pork tenderloin we seared off. 
We wrap that with the excel and prosciutto, and we then wrap that as well in puff pastry to give you that nice flakiness that we know all so well with any type of Wellington. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the pork Wellington out of the plastic, because we allowed that to sit inside that wrapped prosciutto and the wrapped puff pastry to get a nice, tight cylinder shape and keep everything nice and uniform. The reason we're doing that is because when we cut into the Wellington, we wanna ensure that there's no air pockets or bubbles inside of that wrapped pork tenderloin because it makes for great presentation. And what I always say is you always eat with your eyes first. And the last thing you wanna do is spend all that time, energy, resources, money, because I know you work hard for that money, and it does not come out the way you like it. So make sure you're ensuring all these steps to have and secure the most ideal pork wellington you can make. Because it'll be worth it. All right. So unraveling, unraveling. Okay. Looks beautiful. What you want to do when you're baking it, before you're baking it, I like to use parchment paper because that way it gets a nice release and it's not sticking to the pan, which is again, the worst thing when it's done, the temperature is right, you're ready to eat and you can't get it off the pan. So do yourself and the dishwasher a favor, use parchment and lightly dust it with flour. Okay, just like that guys. And then we put our Wellington onto that. And for me, the first thing I look at with any good Wellington is that nice golden flaky crust. And the way we're gonna achieve that is by putting a egg wash all over the Wellington. Egg wash, simply whisk eggs. You take that, it's gonna create that nice sheen, that nice gloss, and just make it that more appealing. So you take the egg wash and just, you go all over the Wellington. Top, left, bottom, right, all over. And that egg wash is gonna act as a gloss. Kinda like, think about it like you know, you're getting a paint job. It's adding that top sheen, that top coat, to make it really pop. And we want our Wellington to pop, not literally, figuratively, because we're eating with our eyes, and it's popping out at the camera, or in this case, popping out from your dinner plate. All right, simple. It's not rocket scientists here, people, just brushing it getting your Bob Ross on. Nice, even strokes, like yay. Okay, we're almost there. Got that top coat. And we're gonna flip it, you wanna get the bottom. All righty, starting to look good already, and we have not even put it in the oven yet. And what the egg wash is also acting as a glue from sealing all the edges, crevices, and cracks that might be in there during the rolling process and sealing them up. So it's a twofold thing. It's for aesthetics and for practicality usages. All right, I think we're almost there, guys. Let's turn over one more time, make sure we got all over. All right. And if you remember from earlier, when we rolled up the Wellington, there was a seam from when we folded it, so you wanna make sure that seam side is facing down, because you want your top presentation side to look remarkable and immaculate, because we eat with our what first? You got it, eyes, correct. Gold star for you. All right, so that looks pretty sealed up. Got a nice shine on there from the egg wash, and I love to finish it with a little bit of Maldon salt or sea salt. It's gonna add a nice little salty crunch pop when you bite into it and also add some nice contrast and texture. So we have some Mediterranean sea salt here. It'd be nice if we took the lid off to get the salt off. <laughs> and just go ahead, put some of that salt on top of that. Maldon flake salt works really good as well. Take it like so. It's gonna add that nice salty crunch when it's done baking. Just a little bit goes a long way. And then, last but definitely not least, you wanna put some little slits, some slashes, on top of the puff pastry. So that way, when it cooks, it's not exploding because the pork tenderloin 
it's gonna finish cooking. We don't want that steam to explode and contract the puff pastry. So a couple little slits, not too deep, where you're cutting into the meat. Just a couple slashes, three or four, work perfectly, just for allowing an escape of that steam that's inside the puff pastry. A little more salt, and just like that, we are ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna put my puff pastry with the pork wellington inside at 400. And that's the brilliance of this Alto Sham Vector, where I can have two completely dishes, two completely different parts of my meal, cook at two different temperatures. I can set timers, the flavors, the scents will not cross-contaminate and it's just its own self-contained oven. So it's essentially three ovens in one. But you gotta stay tuned for the next steps, so make sure to follow the Chef Series only at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. My name is David Rose, and we shall be back. Stay tuned, guys. Hello and welcome back. Chef David Rose coming at you from the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And you might recognize this face to the right of me. It's over here is Latanza Ajay from Georgia Power. Thank you so much again oh, for joining no. me in the kitchen. Thank you for coming to the Customer Resource Center. We're glad to have you. It is so my pleasure. So what are we about to do now? All right, so we're making the pork wellington. If you guys should know by now, if you've been following along on the Chef Series, and what we're doing today is a delicious, remarkable side. It's called a fondant potato. Okay, so very classic, old school French cooking. What you're doing is we're pretty much breaking down all right. The cut, potato. Cutting the ends off. Cutting okay. the ends off, yep. And from there, we're taking the knife and just following the natural curve. Oh, the natural curve. The natural curve, you know, Who's, of the potato. Who says round is mm -hmm. beautiful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is follow that natural curve. Got and it. what you're looking is to create a uniform cylinder. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope I can do this as I well as you can. I have faith in you, Latanz. I have faith. All right. Do it like so, and just kind of right. go around, get those little rogue pieces oh, you don't that they don't want to come off. Clean. You want that nice, pristine potato. All right. All right. That looks pretty nice. All right, and then from there, once you have our cylinder, you want to cut that in half like so. All right. And that's going to be our portion size. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna have you jump in here. Okay. And do the rest. Yeah. All right. Can you handle that? I'm gonna try. I have faith. I have faith. If, in that. if I go I've off, seen her do it, she can do it. If I go off script, something tells me you're exactly. gonna fix it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Worst case scenario, it's all only right. potatoes. It's all right. That's right. Yes. Maybe they're not round. Maybe they'll be square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna still eat them regardless. Okay. Yes. So what are some of your favorite ways to eat potatoes? Oh, I love scalloped potatoes. Mm -hmm. And in a pinch, who doesn't like mashed potatoes? Mashed right? potatoes, Just, nice creamy mashed mm, potatoes. And they go a long way. Uh-huh. And you can make them as decadent as you want, yes. or you can keep it simple. Yes. You're doing a great job, by the way. I am. Look I don't at you. I don't want to waste much of the potato. I love your attention to detail. <laughs> I I, I don't know if you guys could zoom in or not, but you're just like a surgeon right now with that knife. It's the it's the engineering in me it's, coming it's out. It's definitely That's the right. engineering in you. Because and I appreciate I'm, that. I'm calculating in my mind how much waste <laughs> I'm putting on the table here. I want potato. Uh-huh. People are definitely getting potato right now. Yes. But I'm not going nearly as fast as you're you. You're good. No, -uh. slow okay. and steady wins the race. Yours actually might be a little prettier than mine, <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> so now once I finish cutting them, mm -hmm. where will you head with them? Uh, after we're doing that, we're gonna head over here to our induction stove top. I'm gonna start getting that ready. Okay. And again, the great thing about it, it heats up so quickly right now, literally the pan is ice cold. Wow. Within, you know, 30, 45 seconds, hot pan, ready to sizzle, ready to sear. And it's as easy as that. Cool to the touch. And I can't believe you you've got a cast iron skillet mm -hmm. on an induction stove. I love it. I'm, I'm old school too, you know. I like, you know, straight up from grandma, you know, nothing like cornbread in there. Right. Um, pancakes are delicious in there as oh, well. Yeah. Cobblers, literally any and everything I do in there. Nice hard sear oh. on a steak. So I'm all about a good cast iron. Tell me about and it. And that works on the electric amazingly. You're doing a great job. That is immaculate. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. She's not in the kitchen. I do not believe that for one huh? second. You have the skills, you have the touch. That's something I'd gladly put on my menu. 
or in my plate in any restaurant. Oh, now that's a yes. compliment. Yes. So compliment. now you can take this home and show your husband what you made for the day. Yes. You he know? Will be, he will be pleasantly pleased. Add that to the arsenal. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Davis. J, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. So what you want to do first is get this pan nice and hot. Get the oil. The oil will start to simmer and kind of get that sheen to it where it has ripples. That's how you'll know when the oil is ready. So we're gonna take these once the pan gets hot, which it looks like right now, and you always wanna listen oh, for that sizzle. Oh, smoking. There we are. Oh, All right. there There's the sizzle. Yeah. There's the sizzle. And, look and we're just putting it was. down right here into the oil. Yep. And once you put the potatoes in there, you wanna bring that heat down some. Oh, bring the heat down. Bring the heat down some, yeah. Oh. We just wanna get the pan hot. So when we first put it in, that crust begins to form. A little bit more oil. On the potato, yeah, a little yeah. more oil. We want to make sure all the potatoes are getting equal love. All right. So you just let it sit there for a while, let it do its thing. I'm going to have you come over here. Okay. Season aggressively I with salt wondering. and pepper. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we get to put our seasoning. Now we get the seasoning on there, yep. Same salt? Yep, a little aggressively. There you go. Yeah, because potatoes love salt. Mm, potatoes love salt. You know, sometimes if I over salt a dish, now tell me if this is right or yeah. wrong, I actually will put a potato, a peeled mm -hmm. potato in there to extract some yes, of the salt. Yes, yes, right? yes. It'll soak up all of that. Yeah. Look at you, oh. pro chef move. Hey. I like that. I watched my grandma do uh -huh. that too. All right, now a little bit of pepper. Yeah, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Aggressive too? Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. That's looking beautiful. All right. Perfect, perfect. There you go. That All looks right. good. That was good. Okay. All right. So essentially at this point, we're looking for a nice golden finish on the bottom. Oh, so okay. So we're, we're almost getting there. So you want a nice golden face. Nice golden finish, yeah. All right. And Let's let the potato do its thing. Don't yeah. Want it to they stick. want it to stick. Yeah, All you right. want it to release. Mm -hmm. So see how quickly, how fast that got? Yes. So we kind of bring that heat down a little bit. Yep, because once it got hot, it mm -hmm. got hot. It got super hot. And let that do its thing. Once we flip that, we're going to add some thyme, add some oh. butter, and then we're going to baste it with that butter, get that nice golden brown color on I there. See. And we're going to jump in here and use our Alto Sham Vector. The great thing about this right here, I love the multi-purpose usage of this, where you can literally have different chambers and different temperatures. The three compartment ovens right here, in those three compartments, every individual chamber has its own temperature, so you can cook something wow. at one temperature up here, which we're doing for the potatoes at yep. 425. Right. Below that, we're gonna put in our pork wellington at 400, at the bottom it's 350, so you can be making three items self-contained, no transfer of flavor, wow. no transfer of scent, wow. everything individually in there by itself. And the thing that really blew my mind, Latanza, when you open this up, you can keep that open for seven minutes. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, right, like seven I'm over here minutes. Doing something. And that temperature is all self-contained, where it'll stay at that temperature for up to seven minutes. Wow. So you Mine. don't have to worry about messing up. Don't the have oven. to worry about messing it this up. This is every cook's dream Isn't it? at the house. Isn't like it? Thanksgiving meals yes. can all take place yes. at one time in one oven. True story. You got wow. the turkey, you got the yams, you got the macaroni and cheese, which is one of my favorite too. <laughs> And all that going at one time. Exactly, yes. at all different mm -hmm. temperatures. That's the beauty of electric cooking. That is right the there. beauty of electric cooking. All right, so once right, that starts nice to get kind brown. of brown, we flip that. All right. Oh, yeah, that was perfect. Mm hmm. That one got a little ways to go. I think you can move that one to the middle. Yeah, over in the middle. Put that right there. Oh, nice. There we, go. we got a couple more seconds on those. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing that, we can then go ahead and season oh, those right. side season as well. We're going to get all up on it. Right. All up on it. There we go. And yeah, no more these additional ones right oil, there. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Just right. a little butter. Just a little butter. I'll follow behind you with the pepper. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good looking good, we're looking Looks good. Great. Put these two in the middle right here. And the thing I love most about them is you get that nice kind of char 
on the outside, oh. but the potato is still very creamy on the, on the inside. inside. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. The one thing I say with this particular recipe, you want to use russet potatoes. That's right. They have that nice, creamy, natural mouthfeel to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is going to feel like a potato chip on the outside, yes. and then like a creamy potato on the exactly. inside. Exactly. So, with a little yeah. bit of French frying in there, too. because. I love a good French That's fry. That's right. <laughs> all in one. All in one. All in one. We'll put the butter in there. Mm-hmm. I'll just drop yeah, that. Yeah, drop thing. it in there, oh, yeah. Wow. And you can drop the thyme in there as well. Oh, yeah, man. there you I'm go. Do that mm-hmm. Thank you. And what we're doing right now is the butter is gonna add a nice caramelization to the potatoes as well as that thyme. The thyme gives it a really nice Herbal note. It's not right. super aggressive. It's mild enough. Like, a, like an herbal essence. Yes, the herbal. I like so that. Yeah. Herbal essence. Use yes. That, use that. Yes. And what we're doing right now, we just kind of want to baste it with that butter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These are going to be That nice delicious. golden brown. Mm hmm. Now, that was like a half a stick of butter. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not qu about three <laughs> tablespoons of butter, hey, but I can see with the confusion no, back there. No, no, more butter than uh -huh. that, as far as I'm concerned. And you're working for a light brown. You don't want the butter to brown too oh, much. So Get a nice little light here. brown, dull brown, right. and light golden brown. And then from there, I'm gonna have you grab that chicken stock okay. in that bowl right there, mm -hmm. and pour that in there as well. All right. There you go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put in the Alto Sham and finish it oh, off in wow. the oven. All right, so we open I'll that up. Open it up for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, and we have 425 up top. It's gonna go rapidly quick as opposed to a convection oven because of those chambers that are individualized and it's just all self-contained. Right. So we're gonna close that up when we yep. open it back up. Delicious, crusty on the outside creamy on the inside, fond of potatoes, that will please even the most discerning palate at the oh, dinner table. Oh my, so I'm about to have a potato chip, a french fry, and a little bit of a mashed potato all in one. All in one, with the power, the cooking power of all electric. Exactly. But the only way you could find it is by following the chef series and yeah. coming back for the next steps with me and Latente. Great. Stay tuned. All right, hello, Chef David Rose coming back at you again from the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And we're continuing that train with our pork Wellington. And what we're doing right now is with any particular meat dish, you gotta have a nice sauce. It's all about the sauce. So what we're doing is a delicious, amazing one pan plan with the sauce we're making with the pork Wellington. And it's a pretty straightforward mushroom sauce. And I'm gonna show you just how to make it if you pay attention to me. First things first, we have, again, our illustrious induction stove top burner, powered by electricity and this cast iron pan. All right, we crank that up. A Little bit of olive oil in the pan, like so. Get it nice and heated up. All right. And to that, we are going to add some shallots. We're gonna add garlic. And then we get that nice and translucent and sauteed. You're looking for the smell and the aroma and the oils out of the shallots and the garlic to release and release that amazing bouquet that only sauteed garlic and shallots can have. I'm telling you, the person who makes a perfume out of this or a cologne, they're gonna make a killing because something about freshly sauteed garlic and shallots just does wonders for me. Step one, shallots and garlic. Step to any good recipe, believe me. Okay, and then from there, we add our mushrooms. I like using shiitake, gives it a nice earthiness. Okay, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit more oil. That temp down. All right. All right, so what we're looking for at this point right now for the mushrooms to break down, get tender, get luscious, and get cooked down, and impart some of that caramelization and that browning from the hot cast iron pan. And we're constantly moving it as we cook, ensuring nothing is getting too dark and we're getting all the mushroom, the shallots, the garlic inside of the pan cooked well. 
So at this point, what I want to do is I want to introduce some Madeira cooking wine. We use this already in the duck cell, so why not use it again in our sauce? Yeah, some of that. And what the Madeira is going to do, it's going to add a nice other depth of flavor and also deglaze the pan where it picks up all those delicious little bits on the bottom of the pan and brings them all to life. It revives them. It resurrects them. Kind of like zombies, but tasty. You got the drift. So you get that nice kind of golden raisin kind of note because of the wine. And there's brandy in there as well. So you get that nice little sweetness as well that you find in the brandy. And it just adds another depth of flavor and also will complement the pork Wellington because of the duck cell with the Madeira in there as well. And the important thing right now you want to know why I'm letting it reduce is we're trying to cook the alcohol out of the Madeira. So at this part, pretty much, we're cooking the alcohol out, but we're still retaining that delicious concentrated flavor of the Madeira inside of our sauce. Mm -hmm. So at this step, when everything's reducing, I just want to, for the slightest moment, remove the mushrooms from the pan. Don't worry, they'll be coming back. But for this next step, we want to remove it from the pan because we're going to whisk in more flavor. And what's better than flavor? More flavor. All right. Reserve that to the side. We're going to hit that with some beef stock. To that beef stock, I'm going to add demi-glaze. Demi-glaze is uh, equal parts beef stock and veal glaze. Reduce that down till it turns to a really super concentrated liquid, or in this case, paste, which you can find at your local farmer's market. It cuts away so many steps, but still adds that really, really bold, in-depth, concentrated beef flavor. Pro tip, write it down. All right, so you put that demi-glaze into the pan, like so. All right. And at this point, what you want to do is whisk the demi-glaze into the stock. It's going to add a nice richness, a nice umami flavor when it melts in there, and also provide body. Because when you're reducing down veal stock, it releases all the gelatin that's in the bones from the stock. And that's what gives it a nice velvety mouthfeel that you find in these different types of beef stock based sauces and demi-glazes. That's the secret, people. It's the demi-glaze. And you see, it's nothing too hard, nothing too extreme, nothing too difficult. We're cooking it all today with all electric, and it's as easy as one, two, three. Maybe a fourth step, but you get the point. So at this point, when it's reducing, I want to add some fresh thyme leaves into it. It's going to add a nice earthiness but not overpower the flavor of it too much. Right there into there like that. And then next, I wanna hit it with a little bit of heavy cream. Gonna get that nice mouthfeel, that nice richness. Whisk it like that. And we wanna have balance in any sauce we're doing. So you have that nice little salty note from the stock, that nice little, uh, rich concentrated beef flavor from the stock as well. We want to add a little bit of sweetness and I think that sugar will add a nice brightness and sweet layer and note to the sauce. Just a pinch, goes a long way. And then we put our mushrooms, I didn't forget about those, put the mushrooms back into the deliciousness. Let it do its thing, let it reduce, let it coat. Mmm. Guys, can you smell that? Of course you cannot, but stay tuned, the recipe's coming. Let that reduce down. You have the beef stock, you have the demi-glaze, you have the Madeira wine, the mushrooms, the shallots, the garlic, the thyme, a little bit of that sugar. Balanced, delicious, creamy, buttery, yummy. The sauce is beautiful as is right now, but I want to add another level of creaminess, another level of richness. I know, right? Indulgent, but well, why not? You don't eat pork wellington all the time, so if you're going to do it, do it right. I want to add a little bit of butter in there, and the butter's going to give it a nice sheen, a nice depth and flavor, and also give it a great appearance because it's glistening, it's shining. It's like the rims on a nice car. 
The car itself is nice, but put some rims on there, now you're in business. All right, so again, the heat is off right now. We're just putting the butter in there to kind of emulsify the sauce and give it that rich, velvety flavor, that rich, velvety texture, and that nice sheen in the appearance. Mm. When this comes together with the pork wellington and the asparagus and those fondant potatoes, it is going to be a home run, literally. So stay tuned, guys. I'm about to bring it all together, and you're going to not want to miss it. So keep following the Chef Series only at Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. We'll be right back. Hello, what's going on? Chef David Rose back at it again here at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And today we're making a delicious, remarkable, fantastic, that's all the descriptors I know. I know more, but limited engagement time. Uh, pork Wellington. And what goes really well with pork, we're about to find out right now. We have some delicious sides going. We have our fondant potatoes ready. We have our savory mushroom gravy. So we need something green. And what we're gonna do right now is some asparagus. Simple, easy, done in a flash. Stay right there, I'm gonna show you how quick. So out here I have some asparagus. I blanched that. Blanched is a fancy word for boiling something real quick and stopping that cooking process by shocking it with ice. I blanch them. By blanching them, you're retaining the integrity of the vegetable, have that nice al dente snap, but also getting a nice caramelized finish on there when you hit it on the electric griddle. So, real simple, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic. Told you, it's easy. Over here we have our griddle. I'm gonna hit that little more olive oil in the middle. And I'm gonna take all this deliciousness and put it on the griddle. Again, we're looking for that sizzle. Do you hear it? Oh yeah, we're in business. And you wanna lay it out flat. Remember, the asparagus is already cooked, so right now we're just trying to develop flavor and get a nice crust on the asparagus. It's not gonna take too long, so be mindful of the cooking time with this. And again, looking for nice caramelization, that nice browning, because when you get that browning and caramelization, that's where all that delicious flavoring is gonna come from and release the natural sugars in the vegetable. That's right, vegetables and fruits do have natural sugars, so instead of adding extra to it, just cook what's already in there and you can achieve that by caramelization. Caramelize your veggies. All right. And again, you see that nice browning on the asparagus. And that's what we're looking for. Not taking too long, about 30 to 45 seconds on each side, just to get that asparagus nice and hot and get the nice caramelization of the browning on there. It smells so good. I am literally daydreaming about eating this whole meal. And you gotta stay tuned for the rest of it coming together, guys. Oh, I didn't see you there. Chef David Rose here, back in the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And what we have before you is a delicious, amazing pork wellington. We just took it out of the Alto Sham Vector oven and Oh, so good. The great thing about the Alto Sham is that it cuts my cooking time in half, whereas opposed to the 40 minutes it would normally take me to do this pork wellington, I cut it in half. 50% of 40 is, that's right, you're a math whiz, 20 minutes. So with pork, you want to cook it to a minimum temperature of 145. So let's see what we got. You always want to put the thermometer right in the thickest part of the meat, so you'll know that way if it's cooked through. All right. 145 on the nose, but we are not done yet. What you wanna do with any type of tenderloin, roast, and especially this particular Wellington is you wanna let it rest. The last thing you wanna do is take all of that laborious hard work from wrapping the prosciutto, making the duck cell, wrapping it in puff pastry, sourcing all those ingredients and then cut it too soon, and the juices and the interior flavor, all the things that make the flavor of the pork wellington. It gets soggy and it leaches and leaks out of the wellington. Fat, juices, that's all flavor. You wanna reserve that, so you let that rest. Let the meat take a nap for a minimum seven to eight minutes. So when you slice into it, 
it will be perfection, but you gotta see that perfection by tuning in and staying tuned to the Chef Series at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. We'll be right back, trust me, it's worth it. Chef David Rose coming at you again at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. And to my right, or your left, depending which way you're looking, we have April. April, say hello to hey, people. Hey everybody, I'm back. You know, I gotta get in on the taste She gotta thing. come in, she gotta come in. When there's food present, April will be there and I am not mad at you one bit. No way. So a quick refresher of what we made today is a delicious pork wellington, which we're about to cut into. We have our mushroom sauce, we have some sauteed asparagus, and we have our fondant potatoes. Oh me, oh my. On the last part of the series, we talked about the importance of letting our meat rest because you want those juices that are oh so flavorful to redistribute throughout the meat. So we let this sit right here. We brought it out at 145. We let it sit for about eight to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take it oh so gently because we worked so hard to get it cooked the temperature we want. All right, just like so. Thank you so much. Oh, you That's the side it. right there. And this should be the moment of truth. Let's jump in guys and do it. I'm gonna cut right down the middle of the Wellington. A serrated knife works really well for this because it's super flaky and you don't want it to break apart. So just like that, clean cut. Wanna count it down from three? Three, two, one. And you wow. look at that beautiful medium doneness in the pork Wellington. It's oh so good. You see that ring around of that duck so we made earlier and also the prosciutto. So many layers of flavor, so many hours of labor. It's ready to eat. Oh, it All smells right. so good. So I'm gonna slide some of that to the side. Amazing. Thank you. And for the slice, we're doing about an inch to about an inch and a half with that. Like so. We have our sauce. I'm gonna slide this over here. We got the garlic, we got the Madeira wine, we got the shiitake mushrooms, and it's about to go onto the plate and into April's stomach. So a nice little mound of that in the middle. It's all about presentation, people. Nice little mound of that. I'm gonna take our pork wellington. I'm gonna lay it slightly to the side on that. Next to that, I'm going to lay our asparagus, like so. And next to that, I'm going to take our buttery golden brown fondant potato. And again, we eat with our eyes first. Yes. Just give it a quick little wipe down. And there you have it, you have your pork wellington with the garlic sauteed asparagus, our fondant potatoes, and that delicious mushroom sauce. So April, I'm gonna let you I do know. the pleasure. I mean, and let look you do the how honor. pretty this plate is. Thank you. All right, I'm done eating with my eyes. I'm going Jump to eat on with in. my stomach. Get in there. Get in my belly. Put it in your belly. You see that nice flaky puff pastry, oh the goodness. prosciutto. It cuts so nice. Mm -hmm. You gotta dip it into that sauce. The I sauce is what that. really ties it all together. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mmm. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> I think the smile says it all, but I'm gonna let you articulate what you're feeling right now. What emotions are you know going what? through? This is so good. It's like so many flavors all in mm -hmm. one that you just take this bite and it yeah. like flavor just goes psh, yeah. in your mouth. There you go. It's Get some of the asparagus, that potatoes, it all plays well I know. together. I know. And you see when you this. cut into it, you got that nice crunchy exterior. We yeah. got the creamy inside of the potatoes from the russet, the garlicky asparagus, that little char on there, adding that nice little sweetness in the asparagus. And mm. it's just, I do not even know what to say, but the flavors and the smiles and the emotions and the smells and the taste speaks volumes for itself. So this is so delicious mm -hmm. that I'm not even going to share it. I'm just going to take it all with me. That's okay. I got the Nobody rest of this pork wall like this, right? <laughs> you enjoy, <laughs> but you guys can have this recipe too and see many, many more delicious recipes by following the Chef Series only at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center Facebook page. And you heard it here. Stay tuned.